the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found. And always at the eppodcast.com. And belly it up to the 9-foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. My name is Chris, and for the first time in, oh my goodness, 12, 13, 14 months, her name is Hannah, sitting here at the other end of the 9-foot homemade oak bar. Hi, everyone. I'm back. If you listen to the EP podcast, we're, we're entering our, our fifth year this year. In September, it'll be five years, and for pretty much all of it up until about uh, 12 to 14 months ago... It was myself and my good friend Hannah sitting here at the bar. Hannah's uh, best friends with my wife. She's a, uh, a freelance journalist all over the South Side. Uh, she was involved in some of our biggest interviews. She was always just a, a delight to have on the show. Hannah disappeared, and I have spent 14 months sidestepping the question. So we're going to get into it today on the show because you're back, and I'm excited that you're back. I am so happy I'm back. I'm, I'm fighting back happy tears right now. I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy <laughs> that you are back, and we're going to go into how this all came back together again, but we're starting a new year with Hannah back in the seat there at the other end of the bar, and I'm, I'm excited about it, okay? So we're, we're going to dive into all of that today, and uh, we've got a, a look at your 2023 entertainment slate with our Hollywood insider Ben Belton and Jim Sexton on this show, not the former mayor the head coach of the Evergreen Park Mustangs basketball team. On this show, for the first time, Jim and I went to school with each other. He was a year older than me at Brother Ice. And uh, so we may even even get a little nostalgic. Oh, is he the the, the one with the the miraculous basketball game? Yeah, well, he's one of the miraculous ones. There's several guys in this neighborhood. I was just the nerd (laughs) in the stands watching. The the athletes, they they went out and did the miraculous basketball game. But yeah, I'm sure I'm going to bring that up. I don't know how to, I don't know how not to. Every time anybody was involved in that game comes on this show, I bring it up. It's obnoxious, actually. It probably makes them all roll their eyes. I'm sure well, he ex- I brought it up this time. I'm sure he exchanged texts with people like, I'm going on Lanuti's show. Oh, he's going to bring up that thing because it, I can't help myself. So we're going to get into that as well. And this episode and every episode of the EP Podcast brought to you proudly by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. First National Bank of Evergreen Park invest in this community. After all, they love the area as much as you do. Total access checking account gives you free ATMs nationwide. Use anybody's ATM, whatever the fee is. They're just going to put the money back in your account. $300 bonus on top of that for qualifying activities. Paired with their mobile banking tools and award-winning customer service, switching to a true community bank has never been easier. Get in there. 95th and Pulaski, that iconic building right there on the corner. 2.5% 2.5% statement saving specials. They got CDs at 3%, 3.25, depending on how many months you want to invest. It's where I do my personal banking. It's where I keep my business's money as well. Learn more at bankevergreenpark.com, member FDIC. Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar, his first time, I believe, on the EP podcast, though I've known this guy since I was in high school with him at Brother Rice way back in the, in the last millennia. He's the, he's the head coach of the Evergreen Park High School men's basketball team, Jim Sexton on here. How are you, Jim? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me, and I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, for, first time for me, hopefully uh, many more to come. Well, you know, I, I, I was talking to Jerry Verdi. We've had him out here so many times to talk uh, high school football with the Mustangs. And when the season was ending, I was like, well, who am I going to talk to now? And he was like, you should call Jim. And I was like, that's that's a great idea. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, so I, I get you down here. I mean, I've had your dad on this microphone a few times when he was the mayor. And uh, so it's it's about time we brought another Sexton in here. First, I will kick off with that before we get to basketball. What's that like? Because, I mean, here it is. You grow up in a town where dad, before he was the mayor for 20 years, was like really high up in it. I mean, I know when my dad was a police commander in Chicago, I I used to every once in a while have in the back of my head, like, don't mess up because it'll look bad on dad. It's got to be so much worse for you, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, definitely uh, big uh, shoes to fill, not only on the podcast, but, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, kind of living living in the footsteps of my dad, obviously, like you said, you don't want to mess up. You uh, want to make the family proud and uh, just day to day. But, uh, you know, there's also... uh, you know, has its perks as well. I mean, obviously everyone in the village kind of knows you and, uh, you know, he was so well-respected and did such a great job, you know, uh, 
had very uh, a lot of friends and very few enemies. So you know, you know, like I said, I'd kind of walk into a restaurant, walk into a uh, a local establishment, and pretty much everybody knows you. So sometimes that's a positive, sometimes it's a negative. But uh, but no, it's been uh, it's been a great ride. All right, so let's get to the Mustangs basketball team. Pretty good season so far, right? I mean, I know as we're sitting down, this is coming out on Monday. So the record may change a few times. You got a couple of games uh, in between us sitting down on Friday morning and this episode coming out on demand on on Monday morning. But right now you got a winning record. Uh, you, you just lost in a in a in a tournament. I know. Uh, so I, as a coach, I could see it. I asked you like, how's things going? You're like, things are good, but you know, we lost yesterday. Like I mean, like it it hurts you a little bit, and I understand that because that's your those are your guys, and 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 you you want to get every victory that's out there. But overall, how's things going? Absolutely, yeah. No, uh, last night was a tough one. We lost to Immaculate Conception in their Christmas tournament in the semifinals. Um, you know, they're a physical, uh, very well coached team, and uh, have some uh, some nice players. We were uh, started off slow and then uh, made a nice comeback in the second half, but weren't weren't able to get back. But yeah, overall, uh, we're ten and six so far. We've got the third place game of the Christmas tournament coming up tonight. Um, hopefully, get a win there and uh, go strong into the new year. But, uh, but yeah, overall, you know, we've. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, inexperience on the varsity team. Uh, we only had two returning starters from last year. Uh, we've got, I believe, nine juniors and one freshman that actually starts on the varsity. So um, we're, we're playing well. We've played a tough early season schedule with some real tough non-conference games um, against uh, some really good programs. And uh, like I said, I think it's uh, we're only going to continue to learn from it and get better. So I know Coach Verdi, when he comes on, he talks about football and he talks about the pool of kids that he gets to choose from. He, he does talk about the fact that, yeah, he's in competition with a couple of Catholic League schools that the kids can choose from, but he does have some really good football programs in Evergreen Park. What's the basketball scene like? Because I, I know you go and you do things with the youth department and you'll do these, these shoot arounds and you'll have you'll, you're, you're obviously out there trying to find some talent by doing that. But what, what's it like right now? What do you get when you have kids coming in there? Are you still teaching? Do you have some some polished kids when they walk in the door? Yeah, absolutely. Our, our, you know, there's not a real travel program in the Evergreen area as far as travel basketball. There's a lot of kind of bits and pieces of uh, dads starting travel teams or kind of kids grouping in with other kids that may not live in Evergreen. But we're lucky to have a really good, strong Central Junior High. Our district teams, Holy Redeemer, uh, Queen of Martyrs, you know, have strong, um, uh, you know, we got a little bit of St. John Fisher in there, too. Um, that have strong basketball programs that are well coached. I think our, our especially um, all levels, but on the grade school levels, our coaches do a great job of kind of prepping the kids um, to be ready for the high school level. So I, I think we've been very happy with that. We get out to see the the grade school teams. Our like I said, the junior high team at Central has been really good the last couple of years. We've uh, got a lot of good kids from from uh, Central, uh, so we continue to develop that. Yeah, I run a youth program where we start kids even as eight, young as six or seven, where they're working on small baskets, hopefully learning the fundamentals. Um, I, I work with the players. Our high school players work with them even at a young age. So we're kind of developing that to kind of keep them moving forward. But yeah, overall right now, it's really our uh, our grade schools kind of drive the uh, drive the kids that we're getting into school. And like I said, we've been lucky to have uh, good coaches at the grade school level to kind of prep these kids for high school. So at this point now, you're you're a couple years into this, right? And so you're over at this program, are you able to do what you want to do yet? In, like, I know that in basketball, there's systems, right? But you got to have the personnel to run the system. Are you running the kind of basketball you want to run, or are you still tailoring for the talent you have, hoping to get to that level? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, actually, we have really, uh, you know, my first couple years, it was tough. The, the COVID year, we only played our conference schedule. We had a bunch of really good kids, but it was kind of hard with the COVID kind of on and off, you know, we, we weren't going to start the season. Then we were, and then it was, we didn't start until, uh, you know, I think January, February that year. And like I said, we only played 13 games. So it was, it was a tough adjustment, um, probably more for the players than it was for our coaching staff, because I brought most of my coaching staff with me from St. Lawrence. Um, you know, last year got better. We were 17 and 12. Uh, we had a pretty good seat in the regional. Um, we had a really good, uh, I think, you know, we beat some good teams. We beat Marist at home. Uh, we had a good, uh, pretty good, I think we came in second in the conference. Uh, Oakland had a great year, but we were second behind them. Uh, so we were able to develop a little bit more. We had some kids that were really bought into the system. This being the third year, we've really got a group of guys that are are bought into the system. Our system is not easy because it takes great conditioning. Uh, we really fly up and down the floor. We, you know, we got to be in you know really good condition. And I think our kids really worked hard over the summer and in the fall to get ready for that style of play. And so far, we've really uh, we beat Oak Lawn, who was at the time 15th in the um, Chicagoland area. 
um, and really the, the kind of favorite in our conference. We beat them, and I think part of the reason we beat them was we just kind of wore them down physically. Our kids are in great condition, and to play our style, you really need that. So we've kind of progressed every year, and this year we've really, you know, kind of hit on the, you know, the style of play that we want, which, like I said, is a lot of full-court defense, um, offense that kind of flies up and down, shoots a lot of three-pointers, gets in transition, and, uh, you know, I think uh, our guys are really bought into it, and so far so good. Do your kids know how good of a basketball player you were when you were their age? You know what? Because you were a good basketball player. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to embarrass you for a second, but you were a good basketball player. Yeah. You played on a really good Brother Rice team, I remember, that had some really good players on it. But you were you were one of the stars on that team. And, and and th- you know, I know you went on to go play in college. Creighton and then Creighton, UIC, yeah. yep, yep. So you, you went on, you played some college ball as well. Are they aware of it? Do you get out there on the court when you're trying to make demonstrate something to be like, watch this, young man? Yeah, yeah every once in a while. Kind of if, if now my demonstrations a couple years back would be a little more uh, live action, but now it's kind of more free throws or maybe a, a catch and shoot here and there. But uh, I think most are aware, uh, you know, um, you know, every once in a while, I hear kids say something here or there in the locker room. Um, so I think they're, you know, mostly aware. I think a lot of times, especially when you come into a new program, um, you know, players and probably parents alike, and maybe just overall community, um, a new coach takes over and they kind of do their research to find out is it, is this guy qualified or <laughs> where where is he coming from? You know, so you know, I hope that my coaching record at St. Lawrence spoke for itself. And then, obviously, like I said, I think people probably did the research on me as a as a player, and uh, I definitely think that speaks for itself. So, All right. Well, you know I'm going to bring this up. You're about seven doors down from Dan Maloney right now, and Hell you yeah. two were involved in one of the greatest moments that I ever watched live in sports, and I've been to a World Series and watched it, okay? Sure. I, I I always enjoy talking about the, the fact that you brought in a future – NFL quarterback and Donovan McNabb and Anton Walker, I think, made and lost about $88 million in his career in the NBA. And the two of them are playing for Mount Carmel in a sectional championship. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a young Jim Sexton who reached out in between the two of them as they were coming up in a tie ball game to try to get the last shot. You disrupted the play, got the ball out from in between these two future pro stars and got it over to Dan, who's right around the corner here, who hit a three-pointer as uh, time, time expired. Do I remember that correctly? And how often do you tell that story to your team? <laughs> yeah, no, I never, I never told the story to the team. Yeah, you uh, saving that so, for the playoffs? Yeah, like, yeah, right, like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Big game, the, like the, I Herb, want you to... the Herb Brooks speech. <laughs> um, but no, I, you know, it was a great moment, and you, you recall it correctly. It's actually funny. We played at Eisenhower, the, yes. where that that sectional game was was played at. I was and, up in the rafters. Yeah, I was yeah, way up at the top was, of the stands for that game. Yeah, and so we were. Our JV game went to overtime, and we were standing there. We had already had the varsity out of the locker room, getting ready for warmups. And a gentleman came up to uh, came up to me, and actually his uh, his grandson uh, Billy Buchanan plays for uh, for our varsity team. And he came up behind me, and he said, "Do you remember that night? It was the best game that I ever saw." And he was coming to watch the game because <laughs> it was at Eisenhower, and it brought it brought back a quick memory. You know, that was the first time I had been there in a long time. Uh, but yeah, the the play was right. I the, the I had the steal uh, when they were running down the clock to take the last shot. Uh, kicked it over to Dan, and he hit a three pointer as as time expired to uh, to win the sectional. And like you said, that that highly rated Mount Carmel team. But yeah, that's a great great memory. That uh, and actually, uh, Coach Curta, the coach from that Mount Carmel team, uh, is now an assistant coach at Eisenhower, and he took a lot of those old VHS and a lot of those films from his time at Mount Carmel and uh, when he was at Eisenhower as a coach as well and put a lot of those onto uh, onto YouTube. So I've actually seen it circulated a little bit oh, lately. Oh, really? I yeah. can find that yeah. on YouTube? Yeah, if you just, if you just, if you just uh, 94 Mount Carmel Brother Rice, it, it pops up and it's got the whole game. Still, the the, the covered the, uh, you know, the the transfer is not the greatest. It's, right. a little, I mean, it's grainy, of, but it's, I remember it sees some of the, the whole thing. I remember some of the crowd chants that night might not work in this uh, in this current environment. That was, it, was, it was a rough, it was a rough crowd. Be- both both, both, both student sides, sections yeah. were pretty vicious towards each other in that no, game. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. But to answer your question about the, the kids, I think now that that's been kind of on YouTube, uh, I think maybe some some players have seen it. But, uh, yeah, it was a great uh, great win and a, an exciting time for Brother Ice at the time. Yeah, I, everybody wants to say I want to go out and win a state title, right? But is the goal to have those kind of games, to, to, to take the program from one level to the next level and give them some that that magic moment that someday somebody will talk about thirty years later at a, in a basement bar on a podcast. Absolutely, I mean I think that's you know we try to get that through to our guys all the time, and like I said, I think we've got a good buy-in with the group that we have, and you know, and that's the I think you know it's easy to schedule kind of 
you know, teams that you know you can beat or you have a really, really good chance of beating. Um, and sometimes the schedule just works. I mean, sometimes programs have different down years and you may run into a couple wins that, you know, you, you know, blow a team out. But I always try to prep our guys for what do we have to do on a daily basis to get prepared to beat the best teams on our schedule in our league, the Oak Lawns, the Hillcrest, the Lamonts. Um, and I think, you know, getting that buy-in from the players is huge because then you have those special moments. Can we, can we go on and win our conference? Can we win the regional championship and progress from there? So we have always have goals, win the Thanksgiving tournament, win the Christmas tournament, which unfortunately fell short of this year, win the conference, which we're actually in the driver's seat right now, win 20 games at the end of the year, and then win the regional championship. And like you said, moving forward from the regional championship is, you know, obviously the goal is to win the state title. But if you win that regional, you put yourself in to give yourself a chance to continue to progress. And that's where you get those, you know, like you said, those magical moments that someone might be talking about 30 years from now. You sound really positive about this season. It makes me kind of excited. I want to see a game. Like what, what if somebody's out there in the community and they want to go check out your boys, like where is there a game that you've got on the calendar right right now that you're like, don't miss this one? You know what? We've got a big rivalry game coming up against Richards um, on the toy. We actually have a big gap of kind of on the road here. We played a lot of home games early in the year, but we play Richards on January 24th, I believe it is. And we'd love to have a lot. You know, it's always a rivalry game. Um, you know, like I said, we played, played Oakland early in the year, which is a big rival. But yeah, Richards, Oakland are kind of on our side of the conference, kind of the two big rivals and obviously both being in Oakland. So yeah, people came out on 124. That would be great. Uh, people can always get a hold of me. My email is jsexton at evergreenpark.org. Please email me if, if you are interested in uh, ever attending a game, and I can put you on the pass list. We've uh, we've had the central eighth grade team out. We've got one of the uh, south or the uh, northwest fifth grade team coming out. So we're always obviously to get the players out. You know the, the local kids in the community come out and watch us play. But parents, you know, interested, you know, um, community members that want to come see us. We play an exciting uh, brand of basketball and we love to, uh, you know, we really have had some great crowd support. Our our students are awesome. Um, the community really supports it. A lot of our administrators come to the games, uh, teachers and just kind of local community members. But uh, obviously, the more the merrier and uh, anyone ever is interested in coming out, please let me know. You know what? They got they got an incredible school over there at 99th and Kedzie, Evergreen Park High School. They've got all kinds of sports facilities. Uh, you must be just in heaven over there and, and probably uh, looking forward now to see how far your team can go. As you said, you're in the driver's seat. Uh, when it comes to your conference. So hopefully you you remain in there. Uh, Jim Sexton is the head coach of the Evergreen Park High School Mustang basketball team. And uh, I appreciate you coming down here. We'll have to have you back again. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate it. Yeah, the, uh, the definitely tune into the podcast and uh, happy for my first time and hopefully many more. Hey, and I never have to tell that story again. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> One and done. <laughs> Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. Here I am. I'm back at the nine foot uh, homemade oak bar. It's back the same in bar, my... isn't it? Nothing's really sa- changed. N- no. Um, and you've been to the bar you've over the moved last. A couple of pictures around on the wall. No, no, don't and... act like you haven't been here. You've been here over the last year and a half. You just haven't been on a microphone. I haven't been on the microphone. Right. No, it looks yeah. exactly the same. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, a couple of pictures have changed on the wall. Some things have it. moved around and stuff like that. But I mean, otherwise, like it's it's the same thing. Look, Ann and I have been around each other like throughout this entire thing. The way this kind of went down was that Hannah left the show a married woman and is now completely divorced and yes that she was going through some stuff you got a new job you got a new life you I got moved. a new you're living in a different place now yeah. you, you know you you've had a very busy 14 months and I know it wasn't easy for you and we were at a point where like you would show up to do the show and we would spend two hours before I could get you on the microphone listening to what had happened that week. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to bleed into the show. Mm-hmm. And normally I wouldn't care. Like in radio, you're like, yeah, talk about your personal life. People love that stuff. Right. But you you were married to my oldest friend. 
Right. My friend Dave and I grew up across the street from each other and knew each other from when we were like two years old mm-hmm. at, on the 80th block of Spalding. And that was going to be rough. And I think that it the t- was getting rough. Yeah. yeah. And, and the two of us were kind of like this. We need to just like you take care of take your a thing. Breather. You being on the show was causing tension with him. Like yes. there was a lot yeah. there. And it was like it was like one of those things where I was like, this is just getting it's there's so much going on when you. I mean, you can speak to it when you're going through a there's, divorce. There's, there's so a much lot. going on. This was making it worse for even everybody. with an amicable, friendly divorce. Yeah. There's nothing good about it. It was making it. It was making it worse. Yeah. I'm not gonna say making it worse. It was making it more difficult. And yeah. you know, it was there was the awkwardness, and you know, I did. I had I filed for divorce. I moved and I started a new job all within two weeks of each other. I mean, I just like piled everything on top of myself all at once. And you were talking about moving back to New Orleans. Because we always was, talk about that yes. too. Is that like you're a Southside girl for like for last over a decade or yeah, so? And You've I'm, been involved just, in covering things for local newspapers and stuff like that. But you're originally from New Orleans, yeah. and during that time, you're like, I don't know, I might just leave. I was seriously thinking about it, and that's a lot of people are shocked that I'm still here. Um, why are you still here? Why do you what? like this place so much? It's cold. I, Have it you seen cold. the weather outside? Do you know how much I've been crying lately? <laughs> I would much rather be down <laughs> south. Like that's what I would be doing. Like it's you know what? But when you my life isn't down there anymore. As much as I miss it, it's just my life is not down there anymore. My friends down there have moved on. They all have families now. Some of them have moved out of the state. They're not even there anymore. You know, my work colleagues have moved on. I have no professional connections down there anymore. Just so much in 15 years has changed. And it was actually my mom who I thought she'd be the first one, like begging me to like come home. I'm paying for the U-Haul. I'm driving the U-Haul up there. I'm taking you home. You expected her to say, "Come yeah. back." And she was the one that talked me into staying here. She was the one that said, "Your life is there now. Your friends are there now. Your friends are your family, and your your career is up there now. Your connections are up there." She's like, "Why would you leave all that and start all over again?" I'm like, I, I was shocked. I was very shocked that she, of all people, was the one that was talking me into staying up here. But no, so I'm up here, you know, still in the south side, still in the south suburbs. Um, you know, didn't move too far away, which was, you know. Crestwood, right? Yes, I'm in Crestwood. Right. Yep. Yep, I'm in Crestwood. You're not so. that far away. You can not still that. come to Evergreen Park. We'll still let you in. They'll still let me in. Yes, we'll let I'm you still, hang out. Even though I don't okay. have the, the little EP, you know, village sticker, I'm still allowed in. <laughs> You know, like they still let me in here. They still let me in here. And now we get to dive into, and this is something I mean, we're going to talk about a lot of things and it's going to be fun having you back. And I'm very excited that we're, we're doing this again. I know people are going to be happy you're back because this is like the number one question of the last oh, really? 12 to 14 years. Oh yeah. I mean, what they're, they're naming a street for Abby Murphy after she comes back. And I have listeners walking up to me saying, where, what happened to Hannah? Really? Like I'm, I'm answering. Oh man, I, every people time are I went, wanting me back. Oh yeah. Every time I went out in the public, like what happened to Hannah? I started to wonder like if anybody even cared about me anymore. It really hurt me. It was a big, it really hurt my ego. Just a I was little just bit. thinking people thought, oh, she's not no, there anymore. No, it was, it was very disturbing to people wow. that you were gone. Wow. Every guest comes on here, like Mark Marzullo is like, where, where, what happened to Hannah? Yeah. The mayor's like, what, what happened to Hannah? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I mean, like. It, it, I'm it, still here. You're, yeah, pointing, I mean, you're I, pointing to yourself like me. What about, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm doing the Chris best I can. Here. Right. So, so yeah. So, but the thing is, I'm excited that you're back and I, and I cannot wait to get into what it's like to date as a, uh, a newly single middle-aged woman on the south side of Chicago when there's an app for everything. And Dude, we, we were talking fun. about this the other night. <laughs> we were talking about this the other night. And I was like, man, you should really come back on the show. And it's happening now. And uh, it's going to be a, a fun year here in 2023. It is. You. I'm so glad to be back. Welcome back. <laughs> As we kick off 2023, we're going to bring on a longtime guest because I figure as we uh, as we're starting a new year, we should know what we're going to be watching in 2023. The projects that are coming up, the entertainment that's out there, which has really changed since the first time that Ben Belton, our Hollywood insider, and my good friend uh, was on the phone. Ben, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, it's changed a little bit, hasn't it? Well, yeah, the first time that you were ever on this show was like 2018. Back then, people went to the movies to see movies. Now... It's like I wait six extra weeks, I can just stream it on my TV in my living room, and nobody wants to go to a theater. Top Gun 2 did really good, so they must see something. So how are they going to get people to walk back into a theater when they're like, I'll just wait for it to stream? Yeah, I think you're going to see more. um, They're going to do their best with lower, like less money, you know, fewer investors, things like that. They're going to do their best to bring in sort of the 
create the biggest films they can for the lowest investment and then get people back into the theaters. And to some extent, what's really killed everything is these shorter windows. So, right, it goes to, it, it's, it's out and it goes to streaming in about a week. So a lot of people say, you know what, I'll just, I, I can wait a week, it's good. But the ideal is to see these films on a large screen, particularly some of the bigger ones like Avatar 2. You know, they're bringing back a lot of franchise you know, properties that have been dead for a long time. So there's going to be a Wonka movie at the end of next year. There's going to be a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's a Hunger Games coming. There's all of these, there's a Saw film coming. So, and there's some that have been obviously, you know, gone longer than others, but they're bringing back a lot of established names. Even there's going to be a, a, of course, as you probably saw, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers movie. And there is a lot of firepower behind that. But I think that's an effort to to get people of all age levels back into the into the theaters. Are there any movies you're hearing about that don't fall in that? I mean, is there anything original that you're seeing that might be coming down the pipe? Well, I, I think the biggest original properties that you're seeing are, you know, are still to some extent horror. So, you know, there's the the one that the, the silly trailer with the doll, Megan, uh, starring Allison Williams. Yeah, the weird dancing, one, the weird dancing uh, robot doll. Yeah, the weird dancing robot doll, you've got that. It's going to be more horror properties. You know, I've got Knock at the Cabin coming out. Uh, that's another one, the M. Night uh, Shyamalan film. Um, and in addition to that, you will see some kind of unique things coming. But, you know, you, you can expect, you know, more more things. Like, for example, um, you know, there's a new John Wick movie coming. And right now they're filming a spinoff. Uh, you know, with that as well. They're uh, called Ballerina. But as far as original things, what could kind of hurt that is a lot of the Oscar films, the prestige films that you see have not been doing well. So a lot of investors are going to want to go towards properties that they can invest money in and get and get a return on. So you're going to start to see, again, probably more, more Marvel, more DC, uh, but just things are gonna gonna kind of go revert to that a bit. Ben Belton joining us here on the show. He is brought to you proudly by the law offices of Parente and Norum. When you've been injured, you need a team that will do what it takes to fight for your rights. The insurance companies only care about one thing: the bottom line. Law offices of Parente and Norum. Their team has the experience, dedication, proven results it takes to get you to care and compensation you deserve. They have recovered over four hundred and twenty-five million dollars. For their injured clients, and that number keeps going up higher and higher. For a free case evaluation, EP Podcast listeners, call or text them right now, 312-641-5926, or visit pninjurylaw.com. This is a packed show today. We're probably going a little bit over 30 minutes, that's for sure. Ben, is Avatar any good? Because I've had this running theory, uh, just like... Meet Joe Black, which is a, a terrible movie with uh, Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins, did so well because the first Star Wars trailer in like 20 years was before that movie in the theaters. Avatar did huge because it was the first movie when you went out and got your high definition televisions and your Blu-ray players that actually it made a difference. I remember that because when I bought all that stuff for the first time, I went and bought a copy of Avatar so I could see the difference in the color on my screen. So I'm wondering whether or not they've made a massive blunder by spending billions of dollars. I mean, billion with a B on three more films for a movie that originally came out, what, like 15 years ago or something like that? Like, is you went and saw it. Is it even worth seeing? Because I'm not running out to see it. Like, I don't have the same reaction to this as, like, when a Star Wars movie comes out or the big Marvel movie comes out. Or, I mean, even even old Harrison Ford being remade into young Harrison Ford with computer technology might get me out before I go and see Avatar. So I'm wondering, did they make a mistake? What was your thought when you watched it? Well, what's interesting is the film's already done a billion dollars. Well, then I'm obviously the only person who doesn't care about Avatar. Yeah, the uh, that and I I felt the same way. And one thing that was interesting is I I talked to some people who had seen it, and I said, "Is the film good?" And they just looked at me, and <laughs> I, I I I you know, which is an interesting question because typically when you ask someone, "Is this film any good?" they're more than happy to say, "No, no, it was awful," or or yeah, or. Is it that nobody wants to admit what they really think of it because they're supposed to like it? I mean, I feel like that's what this is. This is like this is like the cool kid in the class told everybody this is cool. And everybody's like, I don't know if it's cool, but if I say it's not, I'm not part of the group. Like, that's what I'm thinking this is. Here's what I think it is. I, I think that when I watched it, 
what I felt was that it was so similar to the first one. If you hadn't seen the first one, even with the characters carrying over and things like that, you would pretty much be able to follow what happened or, or what's happening. There, you, it was one of the films, unlike the Marvel ones, where having seen the previous films is you know, really necessary. There's a scene that, I'll, that I'm not going to, to bring up for obviously the spoiler effect, but it almost mirrors completely what happened in the second film, like almost point for point. And there's a lot of things like that, and you're watching it, and and also there's a lot of things in there that will remind you of, of Cameron's other films, like Titanic. So is it a film that's beautiful to watch, and just you just watch it, and you're kind of like in awe of what you're seeing? And the the the, the you know the storyline is decent, but is it a great film? I mean, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend people go out and watch it, but if you like the first one, you absolutely will like this one because. In my opinion, it feels almost identical to the first one. Ben Belton keeping his finger on the pulse of the entertainment world for all of us. All I do is sit here and wait for it to start streaming, Ben. It's now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to offer you an alternative. Full taster bar, great CBD products, brand new location right there at 95th and Kedzie, 3148 West 95th Street. See everything they have to offer to you at coolcloudsvapor.com. There is a brand new smoke alarm law that has gone into effect with the new year. Any new smoke alarm that is being installed now within a single or multi-family home is required to be an alarm that features a 10-year sealed battery. If you have an older smoke alarm that you purchased before that date, January 1st, 2023, you can keep it until it's 10 years past the purchase date, then you have to replace it. There are exceptions, like those that have hardwired smoke alarms, certain wireless alarms. I'm sure the Evergreen Park Fire Department can fill you in if you have any questions. The Village of Evergreen Park is also seeking a candidate to fill an available part-time Meals on Wheels position. You bring meals to people that are at home. You can go to evergreenpark-ill.com to see the full job posting. Even though New Year's fell on a Sunday, waste management is treating Monday like a holiday. So, your garbage is picked up one day later this week. Village offices also closed on Monday. They reopen on Tuesday. The mayor of Evergreen Park, Kelly Burke, is giving her State of the Village address 11 a.m. Thursday, January 19th. Evergreen Park Community Center, 3450 West 97th Street. This is all part of a luncheon. $10 gets you fed as well. Tickets must be purchased at the Office of Citizen Services by Tuesday the 17th. And if you're looking to spice up the new year, remember Evergreen Park's own Sid Sauce. They have all kinds of flavors. They keep putting up new ones at SidSauce.net. It's the only place I get my hot sauce. They grow the peppers here in the EP. They bottle them here. They develop it all here. And then they deliver it to your door, Evergreen Park, and the surrounding area for free. Check it out at SidSauce.net. Are you going out on New Year's? You're single. You're going out. I what, don't have any plan? plans for New Year's. Yeah, kind of lame this year. Are you, are you even? Did you even go searching or what? Are I you did. coming here? Am I coming here? I don't know if you're coming here or not. What are y'all? I don't know. What All are right. y'all doing? All right. I don't know what we're doing yet. The <laughs> yeah, party animal. Your friend, the party animal upstairs, <laughs> sat there and told me that she doesn't know what she wants to do for New Year's. Okay. So well, I don't know what I want to do either. Possible. So. So. This will already be out by the time that we've gone out. Okay. Okay. But, uh, um, uh, you didn't get, you didn't do a, one of those things where you get in there and you swipe right if you want to go uh, to a New Year's party or anything you like that. You know what? Someone suggested that I join a, a mixers, a single mixers club. Oh, I want to hear about this next week. We're yeah. going to get into this next week. But they had they had a New Year's party, a, 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 you know, a, a nice little price of about five hundred dollars out the door, and I'm like, that's yeah, a lot no. of money to spend in the that's hopes that you of, meet someone. And yeah, and 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 it's like you know like. I think it's 65% women, 35% men. I'm like, I'm not spending that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you crazy? <laughs> Feels like the men should be paying more for that. For those, for that, for the, that distribution. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. like that, the guys are probably like, this works out great for me. The guys are having a great time. The girls are all <laughs> cat fighting and pulling their, you know, extensions out and everything and taking their heels off and stabbing oh, each other. So. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to hear about. Yes. This is going to be great. <laughs> Look at all those people. 
in this great suburb, driving down 95th and Ked Z. What a great place. It's called Evergreen Park, but we know it better as the EP. We're known for more than just the Unabomber. Remember Ted Kaczynski? You guys might even remember that big old rooster on 95th Street. It's all part of EP's history. So listen up to the EP podcast. You might be asking why. Because we talk about all things and we celebrate all the great things in the 60805. It's the EP podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP podcast. Evergreen Park. <laughs>